Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, play fast football. All right, remember to check out some of our sponsors. We've got Dome Hats, uh, Defensive Coordinator One, Max One App, Game Strat, and Just Play Football. Those are all great companies that can help your program, uh, help you with apparel, help you with playbooks, help you with sideline replay, help you with uh, communication and, and workout uh, programs, and working with and in-game apps. All right, so we've got five different companies that, that sponsor us and support us. So make sure if you get a chance to check them out, I'll put all their. Uh, Twitter handles in the description box down below. All right, today I'm going to do a little bit of a video on um, talent evaluation flaws. All right, coming off of the combine and with um, you know with all the just past signing day a couple months ago and all, and all the things that this time of year are going on with players signing, whether it be high school players signing or junior college players or guys going to the combine or the NFL uh, looking at guys in the combine or the NFL looking at guys are going to draft. All right, I'm just going to do a video on what I think are common talent evaluation flaws, all right? So um, one of the first ones, all right, is measurables afraid to miss. Okay, so what happens is a lot of times, whether it be college guys that are being recruited, like with high school kids, or guys that go to the combine, they're always going to take measurables. They're always going to take height, all right? They want to see how, how, how tall you are, then they want to see your wingspan, all right? They want to see, you know, how wide that reach is. And, you know, sometimes with measurables, those are, are all things that, if everything is equal, then obviously the better measurables, the better chance you want that player. But a lot of times those things aren't equal. If you have somebody that's 6'2 and somebody that's 6 foot, and the person that's 6 foot is that much of a better player than the person that's 6'2, I think the talent should outweigh the measurables. All right, so a lot of times, in my experience in 20 years of doing this, all right, in high school football, guys will come in and they'll ask you right away, you know, how tall he is. Then when he comes in, will you take a picture with me standing next to him? Take a picture of him in a door frame to make sure that he's this tall or that tall. And I understand all that. And what happens is with recruiting, guys keep or lose jobs a lot of times based on how they do on a recruiting trail. And then in the NFL, all right, general managers or scouts or guys will either work their way up the ladder or they will keep a job or lose a job because of the talent that they bring in. So what happens a lot of times is guys get afraid to miss on guys that don't have certain measurables. So you go look at a football player that you absolutely love as a football player, you think he can help your team, but he's five foot nine, and if you bring him back to the head coach or if you bring him back to the general manager at five foot nine, you're afraid that if you haven't evaluated correctly, now it's gonna hurt you in the future or it might hurt you as far as your job status is concerned because you brought in somebody that's five foot nine. So when somebody doesn't have the proper measurables, you have to be willing to sell that person that they're that good of a football player that you're willing to bypass the measurables because it's a lot easier statistically to miss when a guy has all the right measurables. You can just go back and say, hey, when we evaluated the guy, he was six foot four, he had this wingspan, he had he was 255 pounds, he had all the right measurables, he just didn't turn out, so you can kind of blame that on the player. If you miss on a guy that's five foot nine or five foot ten, okay, at, at whatever the position might be. If you miss on a quarterback that's five foot ten and he doesn't pan out to make it for you, everybody's going to come back and say, "Why'd you take the kid at five foot ten? You knew he couldn't play at that level." All right. So guys get afraid to miss. So all the measurables overweigh or outweigh or you know are the number one predominant thing that guys are worried about. All right. As far as signing a kid to college or drafting a kid or evaluating a kid in the NFL, what are the measurables? All right, and to me, it's just that guys are afraid to miss. They're afraid to go out and say, "Look, this kid's five foot eight, but he's the best football player out there. We're taking him." All right, you got to be able to stand on your own two feet to say, "Look, it's about playing football. This kid can play football. I don't care if he's five eight. We're taking him." All right, straight line speed. All right, forty time. You go to the combine and you see all these guys running forties, and certain guys, their stock is going to go all the way up here. Certain guys, their stock is going to fall down there because of a straight line forty test. All right, very rarely, if ever. In a football game, will you see a player run straight for 40 yards? The game of football is a game of change of direction. It's a game that constantly has movement from side to side. It's a game of accelerating and decelerating. It's a game of getting in and out of breaks. It's a game of getting in and out of football positions. It's a game, all right, of getting in and out to maintain proper leverage. It's not a game of, a, a game of 40 yards in a straight line. And you'll watch the combine and you'll go to all these recruiting deals that they got going on in high school and kids will run a 40 and everybody wants to know the 40 time, the 40 time, the 40 time. Well, a lot of times that 40 time doesn't equate to good football, all right, because speed and a straight line 
All right, might be good if a kid's running 100 in track. But if he's got to run the curve, he might not be able to run the curve. So now all of a sudden that time, if, you, if he's on a relay, you better put him on a straightaway because he can't run the curve. All right, in football, if he's a, a good in a 40-yard straight line, well, he's a receiver that runs vertical routes, or he's a kick returner that you hope can hit one and not have to change directions because you almost never run 40 yards in a straight line in football. So why that is one of the highest criteria of testing in the game to me, all right, is kind of always been absurd. The three cone and the pro agility, those should probably be way higher or a lot higher than the 40, but everybody makes their money on the 40. All the trainers make their money on the 40, training stances, training starts, training all these different deals within the 40, all right? To me, I don't think the 40, I think you'll miss on way more recruits and way more NFL players just going off a of 40 time. And if you watch all the NFL Network stuff that's going on this weekend, all you'll hear about is whose stock improved. Oh, well, look at this kid, 4 3, 3 40. He's got four years of game film, all right? If that 4 3, 3 40 doesn't show up in four years of game film, take the time, throw it out, don't draft the kid or draft them late, all right? But don't all of a sudden jump a kid three rounds or sign a kid in high school that, that is not even a good high school player, but you sign him because he ran 4-4 at some combine, all right? The game's not played in underwear. The game's played in pads, and it's not played in 40 yards of a straight line. So I think 40-yard dash is often overrated, okay? Testing numbers in shorts. You're evaluating people in an environment that they don't play in. They don't play in shorts. They don't play in compression shirts. They play in pads. They play with a helmet on. Evaluate the kid with pads and a helmet on. Evaluate him in practice. Evaluate him on game film. Evaluate how he plays in that environment. Okay? When you evaluate somebody in seven on seven, that's not the same environment. When you evaluate somebody at a rivals camp or a two four seven camp, not the same environment. When you evaluate somebody in a one on one pass rush drill, not the same environment. Okay? Evaluate people on how they play the game of football. All right, so at the NFL Combine, all these guys are doing these tests in shorts and a, and, and a compression shirt. You have them playing football in pads. You've watched them for three or four years. Don't worry about how, what, what they do, all right, in these, in these certain drills or whatever, okay? Unless you're evaluating two players that you have, e you know, even and, and, and equal on your draft board, and now you say, okay, there's certain drills in person that when I see those movement skills or I see that hip bend or I see that body lean or change of direction, that's going to make up my mind of who I'm choosing over the other one, all right? In my opinion, the NFL would be much better if they just did a wonderlick test for intelligence and they did background checks on all the players and then they made their scouts and general managers draft guys off a of game film. I think the NFL, you'd have way less misses and I think it'd be a better game if everybody evaluated kids off of intelligence, background check, all right? Obviously, physical and injury stuff is very important. How do they play on game film? Don't go to a combine. Don't even worry about the combine. Don't worry about what the kid runs. You watch him play football, okay? You see some running backs that run 4-8 and a 40, and all of a sudden their draft plummets. But then you see them on field, 60-yard touchdown runs, and they don't get tackled and nobody catches them. What else do you need to know? That 40 time now all of a sudden is going to devalue him as a prospect, all right, or a high school kid that on film has several long touchdown runs. And they ask you a 40 time, and you say, well, he's a 4-8 kid, coach. Oh, I don't know. He's a little bit slow. All right, well, coach, watch these highlights and tell me how many times at 50, 60 yards he gets caught. He's still scoring. He's still, you know, a, a valuable back. He still has great skills, or he's a valuable receiver. Jerry Rice was a 4'6 guy. He's the best receiver to ever play the game. All right, he was a 4'6. He's not a 4'4. Four, four. All right, so we got to make sure that we are evaluating things the right way. Testing numbers in shorts for me doesn't get it done. I have a lot of kids in my high school career that are great. In shorts, they're great in seven on seven. As soon as you put pads on, no good. All right? So evaluate the people in the environment that they're in. Evaluate them in pads. All right? Maybe even, I would suggest when you go to the combine, the NFL combine, make them run a 40 with shoulder pads and a helmet on. Or make them run, you know, make them do drills in full pads. There doesn't have to be contact. You don't have to risk injury. Just put them in the environment they're in. All right? Now, the only thing you can say is they all test in shorts and a compression shirt, so it's the same for everybody. I get it. But we're football players, football coaches. Why test a guy in what he doesn't wear? Doesn't make sense to me. All right. Who else is interested? Biggest one when it comes to high school recruiting. Drives me 100% nuts when a college guy comes in and says, Coach, who else is offered? If I tell you who else is offered, that changes your mind. So if you evaluate a kid on film, you have your roster at whatever school you're at. You know the players that are playing a certain position. You know what your depth chart is. You know who else you're recruiting. You watch a kid on film. 
He's just as good as the players you're recruiting, and he's just as good as not better than, than the players you have at that position. What does it matter who else offered? Okay? Do your homework. You like the kid. You've studied his background. You've studied his grades. You've talked to coaches about his work ethic. If he is as good as what you got or better, don't worry about who else offered. Okay? Or as soon as you tell somebody who's offered, they offer right on the spot. So if I tell you Alabama or Clemson offered, you automatically go, yep, well, he's got an offer. What changes? That shouldn't change your opinion. If you're an evaluator of talent, if you're a recruiter or you're a general manager, you have a roster, you have a team, you need to make your team better. You look at people play, can they play better than what you have on your team, yes or no? It doesn't matter what anybody else has offered. It doesn't matter what anybody else has done. All right, That, to me, is the number one. When, when guys come in my office and ask that, right away I get completely dejected. All right? If, if, if all things were, were equal and I lied to you and told you that he had 20 offers from, from the best 20 schools in the country, if that changes your mind, all right, then something's wrong. Okay? One, as a high school coach, don't ever lie about what offers a kid does or doesn't have because it's going to catch up to you in the long run. And two, you shouldn't have to. All right? You have a player. He has talent. He has film. He's played the game of football. He has grades. He has a test score. You have teachers or guidance or principal or coaches that you can talk to about his character. You don't need to know who else is offered, in my opinion. All right? It really doesn't matter. But that, again, goes back to afraid to miss. So if I offer a kid and nobody else is offered, my head coach wants to know, well, why is nobody else offered a kid? Well, coach, what does it matter who else is offered a kid? This is our roster. This is our depth chart. He's better than what we have. He makes our team better. Why should it matter who else offered? But guys get scared. They want to know who else is offered. They don't trust their own evaluation. If they see a kid and nobody else is offered, they start going, man, am I seeing, what, what am I doing wrong? Is the film not good? Am I seeing the wrong kid? Is that not the kid on film? Go with your gut instinct. Trust your evaluation skills. Okay? I've been coaching football and high school football for 20 years. When I see kids play, I can tell you who my best are, 11 are, hands down. It doesn't take me very long to figure out who my best 11 are. All right? If you've been watching the game long enough and you know what you're looking for at certain positions or how certain kids play the game, trust what you evaluate. Trust what your eyes see and go with that. All right? Undervalued playing football. All right, to me, that's one of the other big ones. At the end of the day, there's the most important skill-related set that a kid can have is the ability to play football. So when they come and they talk about skill sets, and they talk about, all right, you know, they talk about speed, they talk about size, they talk about length, they talk about bench press reps, they talk about broad jump, they talk about long jump, explosive ability, what kind of ceiling does the kid have? Has he already maxed out his potential? Can we develop him further? One skill you should always look at, can he play football? Because at the end of the day, you are signing a football player to college, NFL, free agent, can he play football? Is he better than the football players that you have? That's it. All right? Because as a high school coach or a junior high coach or a Pop Warner coach, I'm going to tell you, you're going to have kids that are good in the weight room, can't play football. You're going to have kids that test real well in all their drills, can't play football. You're going to have kids that are six foot three with great wingspans, can't play football. You're going to have kids that are five foot eight, and they're going to be the best football players yet. We are playing a game of football. We are coaching a game of football. The most important skill a kid needs to have is the ability to play football. All right? And if he can play football, then you can kind of throw all the other things aside. And that, that, that's, to me, what makes junior high, high school football, it, to me, it's what makes it such a good game. We don't have a chance to go out and select 6'4", 6'5", 6'6". we got to take the cards we're dealt. we got to take the kids we have, and we have to put the best football team on, on the field possible. So we're going to play 5'7 corners. We're going to play 5'9", five, 5'10", five, QBs. Okay, and we're going to play 5'11 offensive line. And we're going to play 170 pound offensive line. And we're going to play 5'10, 5'9 defensive tackles that weigh 205 pounds. All right? All those kids probably can be really, really great football players if you just take away the measurables and let them play football. But when it comes to the next level or the NFL or everything else, the measurables are always going to take over. Oh, he's 5'9, coach. Yeah, he's 5'9, but nobody can block him. All right, and he's 5'9", and, you know, if he's playing linebacker, he's 5'9", 180 pounds, and every offensive lineman that takes him on gets knocked on his ass, and he's sideline to sideline, and nobody can block him. Well, he's 5'9", coach. Okay. All right, I get it that he's 5'9". If all things are considered, and you can find players just as good that are six foot, then go ahead and do it. At high school, we don't always have that chance. So the kid that's 5'9", it's a damn good football player, he gets a chance to play. Because I can't worry about measurables in high school because I don't have the other kid. So that kid gets a chance to play, and what is he, 
You know, why does he get a chance to play? Because I watch and I see how he plays football and he's the best I got at Mike Linebacker. If he's the best I got at Mike Linebacker, it's, an end, it's a no-brainer in high school. So sometimes the decisions we make in high school, all right, they're, they're easier than the guys in college because we don't have a lot to choose from, all right? But we end up making better decisions sometimes than the guys do in college and the NFL, all right, because we don't have choices, so we go with the best player and we don't worry about the measurables. All right, you're going to see multiple teams in the NFL this year in the draft readdressing certain positions that they just addressed a year or two ago. So now they got $30 million thrown at somebody, and they're going to readdress that position two years later. That's why those teams struggle to get ahead. That's why they struggle to win. All right, you can't keep missing on your evaluations. You can't keep missing. It's the same thing in college. All right, you're going to see teams that are going to go out and get a bunch of four or five-star players, and they don't win the big one. They don't win their conference. But they're in the top 15 in recruiting every year, and ESPN says that they've got all these four stars, five stars. And then you're going to see another team with three stars that develops the heck out of their kids, and they chose better kids, and they beat everybody's ass that has the four and the five stars. All right, so if you really look in college football, all right, there's only a couple teams that have all the four or five stars that dominate every year. There's a lot of teams that have a bunch of four or five star players that under, all right, they, they, they you know, underperform every year. Okay, because they oversell the stars in the ratings and they don't go out and find football players. All right, they just look at numbers. Okay, so at the end of the day, when you're evaluating talent, in high school we don't have as many choices, so it's a little bit easier. Okay, but for me, there's a couple things. Don't be afraid to miss. All right, if I'm a college guy and someone says, Coach, you can go out on a road recruit, I'm going to find football players. All right, and I'm going to find, if I coach wide receivers and I have seven receivers at my school, all right, my job is to make my position better. If I find a receiver out there that's better than one of the seven I got, all right, I'm going to sign him whether he's 5'8", 5'9", 6 foot, if he runs a 4'6", 40. If I evaluate him to be better than what I got, I'm going to take a shot on the kid. All right, maybe that's why I'm still coaching high school football. I'm not coaching in college. All right, straight line speed, don't ever evaluate the 40. Testing numbers in shorts. Put kids in an environment. Always look at what they do in the environment that they play in. Shorts is overrated. Who else is interested? I don't care. I don't care who else is interested. Nowadays in high school football, that's the number one question too when they're coming out of junior high. All right, you got kids that live two miles from your school and you got to worry about what other high schools are interested in them. It's, it's crept its way all the way down into high school. All right, and then those schools will go around and go, who are the best junior high pop Warner football players? Let's go out and find the best ones. All right, well, who's talking to him? Who's talking to him? He must be really good. It's the same thing in college. Who's offer? Who's interested? Same thing in free agency. How much value does a guy have? Well, he's got six offers on the table, so his value is this. Another guy doesn't have any offers, so his value is down, so you get him at a good market price. If you like the guy, don't, who cares who else is interested? All right? Undervalue playing football. That's the number one skill as a coach. End of the day, always evaluate how a kid plays football. If he can play football, throw all the other things out the window. All right? On top of that, does he work hard? Is he a good kid? All right? Is he on time? Is he one of your best leaders? That's football. Okay? If you can find those guys, you're going to win some ball games. All right, so instead of doing schemes today, X's and O's, I figured I'd do one with the draft and recent signing days going on. I figured I'd do one. Every once in a while, I like to do things that I vent on, that I, my frustrations in the game of football. This is some of the things that frustrate me in the game of football when it comes to guys, in, guys playing in college, guys playing in the NFL. Too many teams miss, too many teams miss good football players and sign other people because of the things that I just listed. All right, guys, I appreciate you watching. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast. I'll catch you guys next time.